Well, it had to happen sooner or later. Today for ADG Pro, the goal was to hack into the password system found in the old breakout clone Electronoid, as the game generates passwords for you to use to continue your progress, as opposed to just doing save games. Now for old console games and portable games, having a password system made sense, since including a battery backup added a significant cost to the production of your carts. And even when CD-ROM based game consoles hit the scene, the memory for storing your save games was severely limited. However. Electronoid is a DOS exclusive, so seeing a password system in here is kind of weird. Unfortunately, Electronoid had the last laugh, as I was unable to fully break through its obfuscation. But don't leave just yet, because even though I wasn't able to get to a point of being able to generate my own passwords from scratch, I did make substantial progress and figured out how to modify existing passwords to a small extent. Plus I can still go over all the processes and math that I used to reach the point I did, in case any of you want to try and break through some of the password systems found on other games to hack your way to higher scores or more items or later levels. I should point out too that as I've maintained since I started making ADG Pro videos, this isn't a show about getting the correct answers no matter what. Rather, it's a show about the experience of extrapolating the most likely answers without just being handed them on a silver platter. I mean sure, I could just load up a decompiler or run through the executable with a debugger and could probably just rip the logic of the password system right from the game's code. But that's not nearly as challenging, that's just inevitable. I want to find the answers through what the game gives me to work with. and if I fail, then I can at least share what I found out, and then it's up to all of you to decide how much further you want to take that and in what way. So, the first order of business is to figure out what we're working with here, what information we already have about the passwords, what information we need to learn, and then go about filling in the missing blanks with trial and error. Well, right away we know that the passwords don't have to store much, just the score, the level number, and the number of paddles remaining. Although apart from the score counter, which starts at zero, we can't be sure what the other values start at internally. I mean, when we start on level 1, it says level 1, but is it actually level 1 on the inside? And it might really be level 0, but simply indicated as level 1 because that makes more sense to the player. And we have a similar problem with the extra lives, since 0 is not a life. So if we have 3 extra lives, is that internally recorded as a 3 or as a 2? Another thing we can see right off the bat is that the passwords are a fixed length, 15 letters and numbers with hyphens after every fifth character. Though after some quick testing, I discovered the hyphens are decorative only and are ignored when you type your password in. Heck, you can even insert them into the entirely the wrong spots or just completely omit them. But so long as the rest of the password is fine, the game will accept it. But both letters and numbers? Well, one thing we need to figure out is how many different kinds of letters and numbers, because this will tell us how much data the password can store in total. So to figure out just how many different characters there are, I just played the game for a bit and wrote down a bunch of passwords in the process. Though a small oversight, which is going to work to our advantage here, is that every time you go to quit the game, you get your password, which records the state of the game when you started the current level. However, if you continue playing and then go to quit again, you're liable to get an entirely different password even though the state of the data recorded into the password is identical. Now doing this, the game will ultimately give you seven different passwords which should all equate to the exact same game state, meaning those seven passwords are all equivalent in some way. Now after playing for a bit and recording a bunch of passwords, I was able to figure out that we're working with 16 different characters the passwords can be made out of, not counting the hyphens since they're ignored. Those characters being 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 9, A, B, C, E, H, L, M, P, Z. Now 16 is a good number of characters to see, actually, since that means each character of the password can effectively store 4 bits of information. Well, the square root of 16 is 4, and bytes in computer memory are made up of 8 bits each, thus two characters in this password equate perfectly to a single byte. But we've already run into a problem. We don't know what the numerical values of those characters are. Well, you might think 2 equals 2 and 7 equals 7, but then remember that we don't have a 0, 1, or 8, and something is going to need to equate to those values, not to mention we have letters to work with too. Not knowing the proper order of these characters is going to haunt us in the short run. So the next thing we need to do is establish a baseline, and if possible, determine what a zero state password looks like, as in a password that translates to every game value stored being a zero. To that end, what I did next was play the first level over and over and over again so I could get to the second level with different amounts of score, or attempting to get there with score values that I already achieved but a different number of paddles remaining. 
This is when I started to notice something interesting. There were apparently seven common character pairings. A paired with E, M with H, L with B, C with P, 2 with 7, 3 with 6, and 4 with 5. However, sometimes these pairings would show up both as 9, or both as Z. This immediately suggested to me that the values were being encoded oppositely in some manner, and that either Z or 9 was our zero value, with the other of those two being a value of 8. In fact, take a look at the seven different passwords the game will give you if you attempt to quit as soon as you start the first level. Notice how the first 10 characters all show those pairings and that Z or 9 never shows up? This is when I looked through all the passwords I had up to this point and took very keen notice of the last character. Every password the game gives you can only end in 2, 3, 4, C, L, M, or Z. And this seems like it may have been done intentionally since it prevents a straight series of 10 Zs or 10 Nines from showing up in the first level password. Now, I wanted to test this out, see if passwords ending in other characters would work properly, but I still had the problem of not knowing what order all the characters were in. Uh, typically with a console game with generated passwords, you'd have a screen with all the characters listed, and for simplicity's sake, they would often be listed in the same order that their values equated to. I had to know the order of the values, or I'd be spending many hours just trying to figure that out. So I cheated slightly and broke out my hex editor, just in the off chance an ordered list of the password characters would be hiding in the executable. And well, look at that. Right near the end of the file, there is indeed a string of 16 characters giving us the order. However, something I found out later, which kind of messed with my initial attempts to figure this all out, is that it's actually ordered backwards. Value 0 is actually 9, not A. Then the rest of them from 1 to 15 are E, H, 7, B, 6, P, 5, Z, 4, C, 3, L, 2, M, and finally A. So, this info in hand, I was now able to notice that each character slot in the password was being added and subtracted by alternating values, every odd-numbered character slot was being subtracted by some kind of encryption value, and every even-numbered character slot was being added by the same value. With this info in hand, I was able to generate the following password, 99999999972PCA. So, the question was, would Electronoid accept it as a valid password? I typed it in and... Yes, it is a valid password and brings us right into the first level with three paddles and zero score. In fact, I tested every possible shift of the data, all 16 of them, and all of them were accepted as valid passwords, meaning the shift itself has no bearing on if a password is legal or not, meaning the game's restriction on which passwords it will give you depending on what the last character is, is entirely arbitrary. Next I wanted to see if I could decode some values. Now, I was able to get to the second level twice with the exact same score, but in one instance intentionally lost a ball prior so I'd be down to two paddles. Now, the result were these two passwords which have identical score and level values, but with the paddle count one less on one of them. Now, notice how only these four characters change? In fact, looking at our conversion key, we see that losing a paddle caused this value to drop by 1, this value to increase by 1, this value to drop by 2, and this value to increase by 2. So if we apply this logic and generate the following password, will the game accept it and bring us down to one paddle remaining? It does. But now the real test. What if we decrease the count below one paddle remaining? Amazingly, the game accepts it, and we start playing with zero paddles. Now this tells us a couple important points. The first is that having one paddle left does equate to a value of one being recorded into the password. However, the more pertinent point is that we had to adjust four nibbles, two whole bytes of data, just to affect the paddle count, which, under normal gameplay, only ranges between one and six and can be stored in just a single nibble. A nibble being four bits of data, half a byte. Actually, the zero paddle game state is kind of interesting. If you beat the level with zero paddles remaining, the game immediately gives you a game over. But if you lose a life, you're actually allowed to continue playing as your paddle count wraps around at 255, which can end up causing some pretty spectacular graphical glitches, as it doesn't know how to properly render that many paddles in stock. Now sure enough, the game does have some protections in place. Through testing these passwords, I figured out that the game checks to see if your paddle count is above 6, or if your level number is above 100, 
which I did discover is internally starting at zero, so level 100 is technically level 99. In either event, if the paddle or level count is too high, the password will fail. In fact, this may be the only layer of hacking protection in the password, but as we're going to see in a moment, it actually might be more than enough. So I decided to try and apply what I learned about the paddle count the other way, see if I could get this password up to six paddles. By using what I learned about the paddle count, I was able to extrapolate the following passwords and then tested each and every one of them. Four paddles? Works fine. Five paddles? Works fine. Six paddles? Doesn't work. This is where things started falling apart. I tried altering the password slightly and eventually discovered that by increasing the 14th character's value by 1 from an H character to a 7 character, it made the password work. Basically, some kind of special edge case is in effect, which alters how certain characters are calculated, because there's no consistency as to when this edge case comes into effect. Now, what's most likely going on is that it's some kind of checksum or something which is accumulating based on certain values in the password, independent of how the password's encrypted, but I couldn't figure it out after a massive amount of trial and error. And so even though I was able to figure out a lot about these passwords, this right here is what's preventing me from producing a proper decoding and encoding scheme. Granted, my investigation didn't stop there, it's just I was never able to solve this specific part of the puzzle. Beyond this, I was still able to figure out quite a bit. For instance, by applying the information about the paddle count to the password given right at the start of the game, I was able to find out what a zero state password looks like. As you can see, it's all nines with an A on the end, with each nine representing a value of zero and the A being a value of 15. Now, having a zero state password was pertinent because one question I needed to find an answer to was how the score was stored. Well, the player's score in this game can exceed 65,535 points, so the general assumption would be that it would be stored as a 32-bit unsigned integer. But all scores in the game are multiples of 25, since nothing in the game awards other than a multiple of 25 points. So the scores might have been stored in the password as the number to multiply by 25 to get the actual score. But no, it's encoded as the actual integer, since I discovered an alteration to the zero state password that gives you one point on your score counter. I also discovered something very pertinent about the encoding, which I think is a key to understanding how those edge cases are working. Now take a look at this password. This password looks like a joke and that it shouldn't work, but it absolutely works and starts you on the first level with zero paddles and 17 points. Effectively, the score you'd get if the first two nibbles in the score variable were both ones. So I tried scanning the E across the password and noticed every one of these passwords worked. But take a look at what happens to the result. Having that first E in the second character slot instead produces a score of 272, which is what you would get if the second and third nibbles in the score were a value of 1, but the first nibble is a value of 0. As I continued scanning the E across the length of the password, it became apparent that each character in the password was effectively altering two nibbles of data at a time. In fact, based on this, it stands to reason that the password probably isn't technically being encrypted at all. Rather, instead, the way to pull data from it is to figure out a starting state, and then alter that state based on each value you pull, and those different cumulative states you enter becomes your password. But this would explain why all values except 0 and 8 need to alternate, since it would be the only way to maintain a zero state if you were adding or subtracting two values at a time. Now with nibbles, zero plus zero plus zero is zero, while zero plus eight plus eight is also zero, because when you go above 15, you wrap back around to zero, or when you go below zero, you wrap back around to 15. And this is why you'd have to alternate as well. Zero plus one plus 15 is zero. Zero plus two plus 14 is zero. Zero plus three plus 13 is zero. You get the picture. But take a look at these two passwords for 16 and 17 points. Now this is how we know something weird is going on because these two passwords are correct. And this password below for 272 points is also correct. So naturally you'd think this password would also be correct, but nope, it fails. Actually, going back to the character scanning, I actually figured out this password right here. Now, it looks completely harmless, but this password takes you all the way to level 97 with six paddles in reserve. So, even if I couldn't hack through the password system entirely, at least we got an incredibly useful password out of it. 
Anyways, I got mildly ill while making this video and took an extra day to recover and spend more time working on this, but ultimately gave up. At the very least, I discovered a good deal about the passwords and have made all the raw notes and calculations I took available for everyone to download from the video description, and for anyone who wants to take up the challenge of figuring out the rest. I'll also post in the video description any other pertinent details to breaking through this that anyone comes up with, and even if it's just flat out decompiling or a disassembly or whatever, because even though I'm not going to go that far, don't let that stop any of you. Anywho, that's all for today's ADG Pro video. Next week for episode 268, we're going to be taking a look at a sequel I'm kind of surprised I haven't covered on the show yet for a whole bunch of reasons. But the simple fact is, I just haven't gotten around to it. So make sure to stay tuned to see my thoughts on a game I'm sure everyone's going to recognize. Thanks for watching everyone, and extra special thanks to those of you supporting me on Patreon, here's just a small set of you guys.